The Bring Back Out Girls BBOG movement and 164 women groups have asked the government to rescue all girls and women that have been abducted by Boko Haram and reunite them with their families. In a statement on Wednesday, the groups condemned the recently reported attack and abduction of women and girls at Mala Haram in Biu, local government area of Boronu State, saying such incidents represent the failure of government on the, on the part of governance. It also asks the government to find ways of reducing gender-based violence. We're now joined by Aisha Yusufu, Konkom Vena, Bring Back Her Girls, and Kachi Benson, maker of Doctors of Daughters of Chibok documentary. It's a pleasure to have you both join us on the news. Thanks for your time. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right, Kachi, I, I will start with you. Uh, some might find it hard to believe that a few years after the trend in Bring Back a Girls social media movement, the parents of these missing girls are more or less abandoned. Help us appreciate the reality on the ground as you found uh, during uh, your project, uh, um, Daughters of Chibok. Okay. Hi, uh, Felicity. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when, uh, when the news broke, well, six years ago now, um, obviously there was a lot of controversy around did it happen, did it not happen. There was all kinds of reports from different kinds of media. And um, as, a, as a storyteller, I was always curious. I wanted to find out for myself, like, you know, what really happened. Uh, interestingly, you know, you still find people today who tell you, oh, this never happened, it's not true, it's all propaganda. So I had an opportunity to be making a documentary um, in the Northeast region, and it took us through uh, Chibok. And, you know, um, I obviously, the first thing I did was to stop and look for the women, the, the mothers of these girls. And I spoke to a few of them. And I think the, the statements that really stayed with me throughout my stay in Chibok when we were making the film was when one of them said to me, in the beginning, it seemed like everyone cared, but now it seems like the world has moved on and we're still here. And, and really, that's, uh, that's the truth of the matter, uh, because you find uh, these mothers, I think to date, you have about 33 parents have died as a result of you know, trauma directly linked uh, to the loss of, of their children. All right. And you know, the vast majority of them haven't received you know, therapy or, or care of any sort. So yeah, it's... Um, it was sad to see, but that's the reality of the situation there. Aisha, um, does any of these uh, revolution come as a surprise to you? Yeah, no, none at all. No, not all. Uh, for the last six years, as a movement, we have been in touch with the families and we've been in touch with uh, the reality of what is going on. I mean, today is 2,800 and... Uh, 2,282 days that Chibok girls were taken away up until COVID-19 um, uh, lockdown was imposed. Uh, at, at Abuja Unity Fountain, we came out every day uh, to make the masks for, for them. So it's it's really, there's nothing uh, that it's new there. It's just the reality on ground. And unfortunately, the government with whom we have social contract, with whom the parents have social contract, have literally abandoned them. Since uh, since uh, uh, 2017, the government hasn't gotten in touch with the parents. Basically, what they do every year is to send out the same kind of statement with this sort of like tweak the dates and tweak a little a few words on the eve or on the day of uh, the, uh, the the abduction, which is 14th of April, and just send it out there. And you know, sometimes for me, what is most heartbreaking is when some of the parents call us and say to us, "You're the ones in Abuja." maybe you hear something. I mean, it's really not fair that even just information, just sitting down and talk, talk to them. As a nation, we have not been able to do that. The government has failed to do that beyond holding anybody. Like, uh, 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 yes, people have moved on. There are so many things in the world uh, that people are concerned about right now and so many other things that come up. But then the government owed them. Because let me tell you something. In 2014, one of the fathers of Chibogas at the Unity Fountain said to us, he said, government used to fine us for not sending our children to school. Now that we have sent our children to school and they have been taken away, who is going to find government? So you see, it's, it's, 
It's something that the government owed them responsibility because they were in, they, apart beyond the, the basics of, you know, uh, the primary responsibility of government being the protection of lives and properties. They were in school, they were in custody of government, they were writing their exams, and they were taken away. And it's a must for the government. Like I always want, like I always say, I say, look, when we demand for Chibogas, we are not doing them a favor. We're doing that which is right. right. And the rescue of Chibogas is their constitutional right. It's not a favor. It's their right. All right, let's go back to Kachi. Um, writing off what Aisha has said, a sense of responsibility. Uh, why do you feel that the Nigerian population have not risen to the challenge of supporting um, fellow Nigerians, especially these um, women at this time? Um, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> that's an interesting question. I don't know how to respond to that except to say, I mean, in, on the one hand, you have the, the biggest challenge uh, with a place like Chibok or uh, supporting them there is distance. So it's really, really far. And, and then there's also the security challenge as well. You know, so you, you really can't have that many people go in there you know, to say, oh, we want to support and all of that. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, also, then you also have the case of um, through what channels do you do you uh, what's it called now plug in to support, right? Do, how do you trust that you know if Mr. A comes and says, "Oh, I want to make a difference in the lives of these people," that you can trust that they will do um, what they are supposed to do? Because I, I think at the heart of it, when we look at it, Nigerians Nigerians as a people. Um, I think that we're kind. Um, I think that we love to help if the, if the right opportunities present themselves. And I've experienced that in terms of like some of the work that we've done. In Chibok right now, for instance, in the past 10 years, since the, um, the, uh, the insurgency started, they've not had power. But when we made this film and we showed it to a few people, we had one person who donated about 150 portable solar kits to all the homes for the women in Chibok, like the women who were directly impacted by the insurgency. That's just one Nigerian who did that. It wasn't foreign aid, you know? So, but that could only also happen because we were already in touch with the people and we were able to facilitate that, you know, and, and now they have, they have access to at least, you know, solar energy, you know, so that the kids can read at night. So All I think it's a case of just knowing where to plug in, you know, how to plug in, what organizations to liaise with uh, to be able to, um, to, to render whatever help. I mean, that's, that would be my, my opinion um, about that. All right, Kachi, thank you very much uh, for all that you do for the Chibok uh, people. You're welcome, thank you. And of course, I'll go to Aisha for a concluding thought, uh, but uh, mine would be more of what has the movement, uh, the BBOG, been able to uh, achieve in spite of all these uh, hindrances and incumbrances? Well, I, and then before I come to what, what BBOG has done, let me just take a bit from the question you, you, you asked earlier on why have Nigerians not responded. I think uh, we are a nation of broken people, and uh, unfortunately, different regions have suffered different pains, and we, we don't know how to feel for one another. We have not realized that terrorists attack to anyone anywhere in the world. It's terrorists attack to everyone, everywhere, everywhere in the world. And that when something happens, it's not far north or far east or far west. It is all of us in Nigeria that it affects. Yesterday, it was Chibo. Today, many other places, people are being abducted. And I like to remind people that, look, whenever anybody is abducted, it is Chibo happening all over again. So we've not been able to, people have not been, in terms of, uh, from the point of advocacy, people just feel that, oh, it's none of our business. It's happening to some other people. It's not our, it's not happening to us. And I, I always like to say to people, look, yesterday's victims were once survivors. Today's victims were yesterday's survivors, and tomorrow's victims will be today's survivors. The question always is, who is next? And if okay. you look at it from the point of view that it can happen to us, that what is happening to another, it can easily happen to us. Aisha, you, you need to summarize, because we're out of time. Yes, um, if you can summarize quickly, uh, we're almost out of time. Okay, so the next thing I'll say that the Brown Park Best Movement have done so much. First of all, we brought the whole... Uh, the, what was happening in the north, in the atrocities that were not happening in the northeast to the front. We ensure that the Chibok girls were not, forgot, were not forgotten. Though unfortunately now, what has happened is that they have really been forgotten. And I will just conclude to say that even the girls that were rescued have been abandoned. They have been in school. They are not allowed to mingle with their friends. Some of them, out of frustration, have left the program three years after 
They have not even written the SSC they were writing six years ago. A lot of things are going on. But unfortunately, like you said, there is no time. But let every one of us put in our shoes that it could have been our daughters. All right, thank you very much, uh, Aisha. I still, I still see um, Kachi. Uh, could you, in 30 seconds, just uh, uh, give us some final thoughts? Um, well, I mean, I think Aisha has pretty much summarized it. Uh, the government owes them a responsibility. Um, I think that at the, when you speak to them, you just realize that what these parents need is just some, some kind of assurance that, right. that government is still there for them and is still making genuine efforts. That's all they need, really. You know, results don't have to happen now, but just that sense of assurance that they've not been abandoned. And I think that, you know, if, if that can be done regularly, you know, it would, it would help to, to lessen the pain. Thank you very much, Kachi Benson and Aisha Yusufu for your time on the news. Right. Take Thank care. you. Bye. Bye.